Thank you for tuning in to Faith in Jesus Ministries. Is there something broken in your life? You need shalom. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you. Do you have peace in your life? Have you lost a loved one? I lost my cousin Sean. And it really, really broke my heart. Because we were buddies. We were boys. Bad boys to the day we die. And I lost him. Because of fentanyl overdose. And I've been broken hearted ever since. I haven't preached in a month of it. Tonight I want to speak to you about the subject of peace, about shalom, about what Jesus came to give the world is peace. He gave us shalom. I'm here to preach peace to you in your family, in your neighborhood, in your life, in your marriage. Peace be with you. James the fourth chapter we take out one four one and two. Whence come wars and fightings among you like Hobble in Gaza. Not hence, even if you lust about war in your members, lust and have not, kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. These wars coming from, people are asking that constantly. The world seems like it's on the edge of a prefaces that could take us to Armageddon itself. There's a climate of fear. The world seems almost to be out of control. Countries like Africa and Gaza, they're facing financial ruin. Some Worlds, they're fighting political forces that seem to be pushing the world relentlessly to the brink of chaos. Pessimists or optimists? Walking into the dining room, there were two senators sitting there having a discussion. They said, Brother Mike, which are you? Optimists or pessimists? I say, I'm an optimist. Why? I said, because I read the last chapter of the Bible. I believe God is in control of our world. About two convicts looking out a cell window one night. Pessimists saw the bar. The optimists saw the star. Terrorism and war have become one of the sober realities of our world. The television project suddenly did a long study on the Middle East and what was going on with it. They entitled it Near Armageddon. We're thankful at Faith in Jesus Ministries that we're not yet at Armageddon. It said peace is that brief glorious moment in history. Everybody stands around reloading. Can't people live in peace? It causes wars. It says from within, out of the heart, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries and murderous and covetousness, jealousies and wickedness and all the rest. Things that cause war come out of our hearts. It's a dirty, dirty, disgusting thing. You have to read the newspaper to read about war. See wars, all you gotta do is put on TBN. Fights in the school playgrounds, quarrels in your family. Murders in the area I come from, Houston, are committed within families. You always hear the husband killing the wife and beating the kids. It was on the news, on Fox 26 News lately. Drive-by shootings. There was a 17-year-old girl killed by a drive-by shooter. How does he live with himself? It's a tug of war in my own heart. It's wrong to concentrate on nuclear disarmament alone. I don't see other wars among men. Social wars, class wars, bitterness in politics. Throw business practices, all kinds of things. Three kinds of peace smoke spoke of in the Bible. There is peace with God and that's in the spiritual order. More fundamental war going on and it's the war against God, against righteousness, against holiness. But I'm not against God, Brother Mike, but God sees it as a war. His laws, we disregard his plans and he sees us as, as a war with him. Started in the very beginning with Adam. Created man, he created him perfect. It meant that man would fight him. Jealousy and hate, or greed, or starvation or war. Racism, he never Never even meant that there would be death to live forever. Paradise. God created man. He gave him a gift of freedom of choice. Create you a robot that he could push a button and you'd obey. Computer, you're not a calculator. God pushes buttons and you obey. Your own decision. You make up your own decisions. You have a will of your own. That's the way God made you. He made you in. God made you in his image. Physical image, but the moral image. You have the right to choose the kind of destiny and where you want to spend eternity. If you like it or not, you are going to live forever. You and you and you. Who are you? The part of you that lives inside of your body called your soul or your spirit. Forever, either in heaven or hell. It's the secret. 
You make the choice. For his love and his mercy and his grace and his kindness and his joy and his peace. His son to die on the cross for you, but if you reject it, make your own hell. This life and the life to come. There must be peace made with God. Colossians 1, it says, having made peace through the blood on the cross, and saw all things unto himself. Christ died on the cross and shed his blood. It made it possible for us to be reconciled with God. And what faith in Jesus' ministry is all about. The Father's business. Taking care of the Father's business. Giving you the word. Giving God the glory. Get people to understand they can be reconciled to God. Peace in your own heart. In your family. Peace in the neighborhood. Peace in the country. Peace in the Gaza Strip. Ultimately peace in the world. Ephesians 2.14 says, says, I am the peace. I am the truth. I am the way. No man gets to the Father but through me. This is your peace. You want peace? Come to Christ. He's got peace for you. He says, I give you peace, not like of the world. The true peace, come to Christ. If you want to make a contribution to the world, give your life to Christ. It's the greatest contribution you can make. The only basis to making peace between God and man, the Bible teaches. Secondly, there's a psychological order, a peace of God. Augustus described it as the tranquility of order. In the Testament, there was a young man that God called of Gideon. He had a big job to go out and fight another army that was another big army. He told him, your army's too big, Gideon. And God says to Gideon, your army's too big. Get, get them to drink some water. And the men that cup their hands to the water, they 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 ain't no good fighters. The ones that drink like dogs, that's the ones you want. You want your dogs. Dogs to fight a major army. Very frightening. God said, Gideon, relax. I'm with you. Gideon built an altar and called it Jehovah Shalom. God is peace. Bye. Because God was putting the whole thing together for Gideon. God can put your life together for you. Marriage, your relationship with friends, does not remove the troubles and the difficulties in life. Also, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it was. Three times he asked God to remove it. My grace is sufficient for thee. I'll be with you in the midst of your suffering. A catalog of all the sufferings that Paul went through will not remove the harsh realities of life. Give you the grace and the strength and the power to go through it. In prison, he could sing and testify the Lord is good. He's good all the time. At the very last, before he was slain in Rome, he could shout triumphantly that he was ready to meet God. He finished his work. Shalom said, you put your life in my hands, I will order it. Get it together the way he wants it together. And if you let him work things out, we'll have peace. Shalom be with you. Have a new life. As Christians, Jesus sends us out as sheep among wolves. Think of anything more dangerous than that? Hold, I send you as sheep among wolves. He added something else. Why, in the midst of the wolves, himself will give you peace. He'll be with you to help you along with them addictions to them drugs, that crack, that meth, that heroin, that fentanyl, that marijuana, that cigarettes, them pain pills gonna help you get over all them things. It's the Christian distinct. What helps brother Mike different makes him different than other people in the world. He's with us in the midst of our troubles and difficulties. Our hardships. We're not exempt from all the difficulties that people have to go through. People always think God's gonna make you happy and healthy and glowing. And wealthy. Come to Christ. It is not true. Come to Christ many times the difficulties will increase, I tell you. Because Jesus says there's two roads in life. One is a broad road and one is a narrow road. When you receive to receive Christ and go through a narrow gate, a narrow road that leads to eternal life and against the stream of humanity, it's like swimming upstream. It brings friction and sometimes more difficulty than you ever had before. God says he will be with you in the middle of it teaches that we're going to confront harsh realities. Jesus said, count the cost. If you're not willing to deny self, deny yourself the wrong things and take up your cross. Jesus says, I'm going to die. Go and die with me. It'd be very unpopular to hang on that cross. Go back to your school and back to your neighborhood and back to your job and take a stand for me. Oh, so they laugh at you and make fun of you and say things about you that cost to follow Christ in our present age. Jesus teaches you're going to have to face them. And by himself is limited. You say it won't happen to me, but it is appointed to man once to die in the judgment. There comes a time when we all suffer. A problem can start like that. Sooner or later, we all die. Somewhere, sometime, there'll be that stroke or that heart attack or that knowledge that you have cancer or you died in a car wreck or you were shot on the freeway by a road rager. A car wreck that can happen so fast you can't bat an eye. I'm involved in all this. In the midst of whatever it is, Christ is with you if you know him.
Do you see there's the peace of God? I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. The world give I unto you. Do not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. For what you're facing, don't be troubled, don't be afraid, be brave. I give you my peace, but in the midst of the storms of life. Storms are going to rage, but is there peace of God if you have peace with God? In Philippians the fourth chapter, it says, Peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Theological peace doesn't come from evading or avoiding or manipulating. It's supernaturally from God, from the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, give me strength in Jesus' name. It's the third kind of peace. You know, Peace on earth. Just came and announced the birth of Christ. They said, Peace be with you. They said, Peace on earth and goodwill among men. Where did that go? In this satanic world we live in, where did that go? Haven't we had peace? Did Jesus come to bring peace, you say? There's wars in 2,000 years of wars and rumors of wars, but people misunderstood. You would have had peace had you received it. Received all, all of it. Rejected it. It's like you right now are rejecting Christ. We'll talk about the Prince of Peace when the United Nation was found. You left out. Have peace in this world till you take into account the Prince of Peace. Make him King of Kings and Lord of Lords again. It says there's coming a day that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Don't wait. Don't wait till that day. My friend, that day is coming. There's going to be a judge. You're someday you're going to stand before Almighty God and be judged. Every person here today and all you watching by YouTube and Facebook and television will stand alone before God. The thought that you ever thought, intent of your moral choice you ever made that was wrong, sin that you ever committed will be brought to light. What's in the dark is going to be brought to light. Tapes are rolling. The film is rolling. It's all there. You have to face it and give it an account because it's appointed man wants to die. And then the judge. Scripture says God has appointed a day that he will judge the world. Brother Mike wants to know, are you ready? Are you ready for that judgment day? Can be. Despite in the fact that God is a God of judgment, more a God of love. God loved Brother Mike. Hate sin, but he loves Brother Mike enough to forgive him of his sin. Forgive you too. Because his mercy to you. He offers forgiveness to you. He offers his peace and healing to you. Come to the cross where Christ took your sin. Christ died on the cross. God put upon him... Your sins and mine. He became sin for us. He became guilty of our sin. But for the judgment for Brother Mike. He went to hell for Brother Mike. For there is no judgment in those that live in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus lives in them. Christ, I'm telling you something. You a new creature. I'm going to tell you a secret. If you in Christ, you will never be at that great white throne judgment. It's past for you. It's finished. It's passed over. Jesus bowed his head on the cross and said, It is finished. The way to heaven was finished. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. I did not come into the world to judge the world. I came into the world to give you life and give it more abundantly. Serve an abundant God that wants to bless you. You have not because you ask not. You ask not because you have not. Yes, salvation was complete by Brother Mike's goodness. Not because I go to church. Because I go to church or I read the Bible or I'm a clergyman. Jesus did it on the cross. He bore my sins and your sins. So we don't have to be part of the judgment. Only those that don't have Jesus have to be judged. Hundreds of you watching me on YouTube and Facebook that have been baptized, firmed as I was, but when I reached 16 or 17, something was wrong with brother. I was born broken. I needed a heart transplant. My heart was wicked. Something was missing from my heart. I didn't really know Christ for myself. It's missing from Brother Mike that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is my friend. He is my homeboy. He's my apostle. He's my brother. My bre bad boy brother to the end till we die. I've repented of your sins and received him by faith. He'll help you with those sins. He lives now in Brother Mike's heart. Brother Mike had a heart transplant 2,000 years ago. I had a blood disease. My, I had sin in my blood. My blood wasn't right. He said, thy kingdom will come. Prayer is going to be answered. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In heaven as it is on earth. Never been answered. Judge among the nations and rebuke many people. It says, I know with you not. Depart from me. One day nations shall not lift sword against nations. Shall they learn war anymore? In the meantime, Brother Mike expects to work for peace. Work for peace between Israel and Gaza Strip and Hamas. 
Let's look for peace. God bless the peacemaker to bring peace of all time. Because we do not know if this is end time or not. We do not know when the kingdom is going to come and take over the world. The peace, the shalom, can begin in your life right now. Hey, Brother Mike, preacher man, what do I have to do? Be smart on your part. You must repent of your sins. Means, what does that mean? That means that you're willing to say to God, I have sinned and I'm sorry for it. Willing to change my way. A second thing, receive your heart. The Lord Jesus Christ to make him Lord of your life. He can save you of life. God wants to save you. He sent his son Jesus Christ to save the world. Say you're willing to follow him and serve him. This moment on. If you'd like to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just say this little prayer with me. Lord, I repent of my sins. I'm a dirty, dirty dog. And I've done wrong. And I just repent. I'm sorry for them sins. And I receive your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior, the Lord of Lord and King of Kings, in Jesus' name. And just say, Amen. God is with you, in Jesus' name. Stay tuned for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and show you His kindness, His love, His mercy, and His grace. May He open the windows of heaven and pour blessings upon your life. You have no room to receive, in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen.